This is my mom's hummus recipe. It's one of the best appetizers in the Middle East, and this is the only recipe you'll ever need. We're gonna keep our canned stuff in the pantry. We need some dried chickpeas. Hummus is all about its texture, and starting off with dry chickpeas is just the way to go. We're gonna submerge them in water, and then we're gonna let these soak and hydrate overnight. For reference, check out their size today. Essentially, we marinate until we lose patience, in this case, overnight. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Next day, the chickpeas have almost doubled or even tripled. They're nice and hydrated, and we're gonna get rid of this water. We're gonna drop them into a large pot, submerge them with clean water, just turn the pan onto a high heat, and bring these up to a light bubble. And we're gonna add the slightest amount of baking soda. This is gonna speed up the cooking process on the chickpeas, but if you add too much, it will give it a bitter taste, so don't come for me if it does. Just a tiny bit goes in. As it comes to temperature, it's gonna foam up to the top just like this. I'm just gonna remove it. When it starts to bubble away like this, we're gonna drop it to a low and cook for a couple hours. They should come out nice and tender like this. I'm gonna transfer them off to a different container, and then I'm gonna actually toss these in the freezer to cool down. Number one rule is to not put warm chickpeas in the food processor. You will not have a smooth hummus. Now, I know we've worked pretty hard for these chickpeas, but once they go in the freezer, you could keep them frozen for months and literally make hummus whenever you want. In a food processor, we're gonna go in with our cold chickpeas. These are pretty much frozen, which is totally fine to use. And if they are just cold, you could add in a couple ice cubes. So this we're gonna go in with our tahini, which is sesame paste. And before we add the rest of the ingredients, I'm gonna give this a pulse. I'm gonna scrape down the sides a couple times. And at this point, it's still gonna be kind of dry and clumpy. When it kind of looks like Play-Doh, I'm gonna go in with a lot of lemon juice. After the lemon, I'm gonna drop in a tiny bit of cold water, a very generous and hefty pinch of salt. And then this is optional, but you could add in a little cumin. And then we blend. This is a PSA to all the hummus connoisseurs. No, I did not forget the olive oil or the garlic. This is just my preference, but if you like garlic, you could add some. If this is not as perfectly smooth as you like it, add a little bit more water. This is the beautiful consistency we're looking for. It holds nice and thick, but it's not watery, and it's just silky smooth at the same time. Now, congratulations, you made your first perfect plate of hummus. Here's how I like to notch it up a lot. In a scorching hot pan, I'm gonna go in with a lot of clarified butter, and then when screaming for help, I'm gonna go in with some lean beef. This is some cubed up filet mignon. Just a quick hefty pinch of salt. Keep it on extremely high heat, and then I just wanna get a really nice on it. When it gets nice and brown like this, it's ready. That just looks absolutely incredible. It's creamy, dreamy, and one of the best bites you could have. We're gonna grab a chunk of meat and dip it in some of that ghee. And as always, now bismillah. That is so delicious, I cannot describe how good that meat is. Hey, yo. <laughs> that tender, juicy filet. I'm telling you, this is a bite to remember. Everything about this is just perfection.